At the start of the film, we meet Cass, who is a school teacher. After completing her lecture, as soon as she leaves for home, it suddenly gets dark and it starts raining here. Cass, sitting in her car, leaves for her home, which was far from the school in the middle of the forest. On the way, she saw a car in which a woman was sitting still. She was not moving, nor was she doing any other movement. Cass, sitting in her car, sees her and then moves her car forward. She didn't call the police because she was scared of this woman. The next morning, Cass's husband, whose name is Matt, tells Cass about a murder near his house. As soon as she searches on Google, she gets shocked seeing this, that this lady was the one she saw in the car last night. In the next scene, Cass meets her childhood friend, Rachel. And from what they talk about, we know that Cass's mom had died two years ago. Due to its grief, Cass has not come out yet. They both go shopping, because this evening was a friend's birthday, whose party they'd to go. After shopping, Cass wants to go home, and leaving the car, she feels that someone has kept an eye on her. She just ignores it and comes inside the house. Upon reaching her house, she sees a strange-looking man outside her window who was keeping an eye on her. Seeing him, Cass suddenly gets scared. Her husband comes behind her and asks, what are you looking at? Then Cass said, there's a man outside who is staring at me. When Matt looks outside, there was no one outside. He says to Cass, I know you are tired, you should rest. You have hallucinations. But Cass said that she had seen this man, but Matt did not believe her. In the evening party, Rachel and Cass talk about the same murder that was committed near their house. She tells him that the woman who was murdered, the woman used to work in Rachel and Matt's office. Upon returning home, Cass and Matt talk about the same murder. Cass was very scared, so she says to Matt, isn't it possible that we install an alarm system in our whole house? Matt also likes her idea, and he quickly gets up and closes all the windows and doors of his house. When Matt was outside, this time Cass gets a call on the phone. On picking up Cass's phone from the other side, no one was saying anything. Obviously, this was a threatening call for Cass. In the morning, the news of this murder was also coming on TV. Seeing this, Cass was even more scared. Suddenly, she felt that someone was behind her. When she goes out and checks, we can see someone's shadow behind Cass. Again, she gets a call from the number on the phone. And this time, on picking up the call, no one was saying anything. After a while, a boy comes to Cass's house. Cass opens the door, afraid. She finds out that he had come from the alarm system company from which Matt had agreed to install an alarm system. After all this, Cass now goes to the murder site. There were a lot of bouquets there, and there was also a fox there. Seeing this, Cass got scared and immediately went to her house. She had stolen an earring from the murder site. She brought it and kept it in her house. Tonight, when Cass went to take a shower, Cass felt very strange while taking a shower. She felt that someone was forcing her to drown in water. She quickly calls Matt after coming out of the washroom and tells him that someone has come to her house. Now she was talking on the phone. When suddenly her doorbell rings, she immediately goes to check on the door. Then officers came there who carried out an investigation of the murder near her house. Officers ask, did you see that car there after the girl's murder? Scared, Cass says, yes, I saw it, but I had no idea that she would have died. I was very scared, so I didn't call the police. Matt, who had come here at the time of the investigation, after the departure of the officers, asked Cass, why didn't you tell me that you had also passed through there that night? In response, Cass says, because you had stopped me from passing through that road. I thought if I told you, you would be angry with me. Now in the morning again, Cass gets a call from the same unknown number, and this time, no one from the other side gives her a response. Right at this time, her house is knocked again. She goes outside and sees that one of her students has come to return her book. With this, Cass also gets ready and leaves for school. Today was a holiday, but still, Cass came to school because she had a meeting. But when she goes to the office, she sees that there is no teacher in the office. At that time, one of her colleagues, who is the coach here, comes to her and asks her, why did you come here today? Cass says that there was a meeting today, but no teacher came. Surprised, the coach replies to her that there was no such meeting today. Hearing this, Cass also gets worried and leaves from here. And when Cass left for home in her car, we're shown that the coach, with a strange look, was keeping an eye on Cass. Now she was at home all day when she got a call from Matt. Matt told her that he will be late from work today. So Cass also hung up the phone. After hanging up the phone, 
Cass started making a strange noise in her house again. As soon as she checked this noise, she saw that her whole room was covered with a polythene sheet. And under the polythene sheet, she could see someone's shadow. And as soon as she was close to the shadow, suddenly, somehow the polythene wrapped around her. She could not even breathe. While trying to get herself out of this polythene, she came out and got a call from her unknown number again. As usual, this time too, no one was responding from the other side. Now Cass was very scared. She was afraid and slept. In the middle of the night, someone woke up Cass with her name. As soon as Cass wakes up, the door of her room opens. There was no one at the door, and she heard her mom's voice from here. Although her mom died two years ago, when Cass followed that voice, she could see her mom's soul. She was scared and ran away from there. That soul also followed Cass, but it did not come to the washroom behind Cass. After that, Cass heard a lot of things falling from her room. She called the police out of fear. The officers who were investigating the murder come to her soon. But after searching her house thoroughly, they did not find anyone here. And as Cass was telling them that she heard the sound of breaking things from her room, there was nothing moving there. Now looking at the serious condition of Cass, the officers call someone. And a shocking thing is found there, that two years ago, Cass was admitted to the mental hospital. That's why now the officers started doubting Cass. They started doubting that maybe Cass is still not right. And behind that murder and all such things, Cass can be responsible. When no one believed in Cass's words, then Cass meets her colleagues, who was the coach. The coach used to listen to her. She tells everything to the coach. The coach asks, who do you doubt? Who must have come to your house? Then Cass says, I think that kid who has been after me for a long time, he says that he likes me. I said no to him. Maybe he is taking revenge for the same thing. At night, we see that Cass and Matt were together. From the talks of both of them, we know that when Cass's mom died, after that, Cass went into a lot of depression. To get rid of depression, she used a lot of pills, the side effects of which she got hallucinations. Matt says, I think you must have been hallucinating today too. But Cass said, no, these were not hallucinations. I'm sure someone had come here. Now Matt tells her that an alarm technician had come to our house. You've made a contract to install an alarm here. And this bothers Cass because she had not signed any contract. Matt does not argue with her because he knew Cass was already worried. They both go to sleep. And in the middle of the night, Cass wakes up. She takes out contract papers from Matt's bag and sees that it was really signed by her. She herself started doubting her mental state. The next morning, Matt was very happy and a little angry because he found out that Cass was pregnant. He asks her, why didn't you tell me such big news? But Cass says, no, I'm not pregnant, so why would I tell you? Hearing this, Matt becomes sad, and he says, you must have forgotten, like you signed a contract and you forgot. He takes her to the hospital, and it is confirmed that Cass was saying the same thing. She was not pregnant. Here, the doctor gives her some medicines to improve her mental state after which Cass and Matt both go home. Coming home, Cass was upset with Matt because Matt had explained Cass's mental state very strangely to the doctor. At night, when Cass was watching TV at home, once again, she started hallucinating. In the TV, she sees a shadow of her mother. And on the table, she sees a knife filled with blood. Seeing this, she calls Matt loudly. Matt sees that there was no blood-filled knife there. Matt was fed up with all these, these things of Cass. And then he says to Cass, Go and eat the medicines the doctor told you. In the morning, Cass wakes up with the noise of a child's cry. There was no child in her house. When she went out of the house to check, she saw something wrapped in white cloth. As soon as she opened the cloth, there was a dead body of a crow inside. Seeing this, she got scared. Cass was worried by all these bad feelings inside. What she could see, what she could understand, no one believes her. In this frustration, she takes all the medicines the doctor told her. That means she gets overdosed, and thus her health deteriorates. She became unconscious. When she came to her senses, her house's light was blinking. She got scared. Again, her door was knocked, and when she went out, she saw that there was an officer outside. She was investigating the murder. Cass took her inside the house. She told her everything about herself. She told her how she went into depression after her mom's death, and she still has hallucinations. She brings the officer to the girl's earring from the murder site. After that, the officer asks her about her and Matt's relationship. Then she tells her that her and Matt's relationship is very good. But the officer says that she has a complaint, 
that you have an affair with your colleague. Cass clarifies to the officer that she and her colleague are just friends. She doesn't have anything else. When he came home, Matt was again angry at Cass because he found out that Cass gave the earring to the officer. He asks Cass why she didn't tell him about this. You've started hiding a lot from me. Cass says that she doesn't hide anything. I just forgot. And you know how many things I'm forgetting these days. One day, Cass was at home. Then she got a call. This was from the company of the security alarm. Cass knows while talking to the company that the contract was signed by Matt because the day they came to sign the contract, Cass was not at home that day. And because of this, Cass started suspecting Matt. Why did he lie to Cass? Why was he blaming Cass that she didn't tell him after signing the contract? And what was the reason for his fake signing of the contract? Now she started doubting that maybe Matt had some other affair. In this case, she talks to her friend. So she asked a private investigator to follow Matt. However, she also had a doubt about Rachel that maybe Rachel and Matt had some affair. That's why she stole Rachel's mobile secretly. In this mobile, Cass gets a lot of messages that she was shocked to read because all these messages were linked to that murder. From this mobile, Cass also finds out that her doubt was absolutely correct. Rachel and Matt have an affair. Their colleague came to know about this affair, so they made a plan and murdered her. One night, they called her to Matt's house and caught her and killed her on the way. Cass couldn't believe that it was Matt who did all this. Now she calls that unknown number from Rachel's phone that she used to call her daily. After calling that number, she sees that the number was picked up by Matt. That is, the threatening calls were done by her husband, Matt. Cass couldn't believe the betrayal of her husband. To get out of this worry, she takes an overdose of her depression medicine. Not only that, when she can't bear this all, she cuts her veins. She fell there. At this time, one of her students came to give her the book. He knocks at the door again and again. When he hears no voice from inside, he checks from the window. He sees Cass in a bad condition. He calls the police immediately, and the police rescue her. Matt had already found out from Rachel that Rachel's phone was with Cass at this time. And from Rachel's phone, on the unknown number on Matt's other phone, Cass had called. Clearly, she had found out everything about Rachel and Matt. These people were now looking for that mobile in the house so that the police could not get a clue about it. And when they came to the house, they were suddenly shown Cass's shadow. And seeing this, they had an idea that Cass was still alive and was coming back home. Before he could do anything to Cass, Cass's colleague from behind caught Matt. To save Matt, Rachel was about to attack him, but suddenly the police came here. To save Matt, she attacks the man, and to save himself, the man leaves Matt. Now here, Rachel was about to attack Cass, but in the meantime, Cass's friend came to save her life. And in the meantime, the police also came, who shifted Cass and her colleague friend to the hospital and saved their lives. Matt and Rachel were arrested. Now the scene is cut, and we are shown a scene from a few days later where Cass was telling her colleague that after going to jail, Matt's mental condition was very bad. And because of that, he was killed, while Rachel had confessed all her crimes at the court and because of that, she was sentenced to life. Here we come to know that actually Cass was not mad. Matt was making her mad by giving her drugs and creating situations that made her seem mad. Their affair was very old. They wanted to kill Cass and take all her property. But one of their colleagues got the news of their bad intentions. Before she told all this to Cass, they both killed her. Here, another big truth is revealed by Cass. She had a spy camera in her house, with which she used to keep an eye on her husband every time. She already knew his bad intentions. She already knew about Matt's plan. And because Matt had no doubt, she was acting according to Matt's plans. She had already told all these things to the police officer. And the police had made this whole plan to catch Rachel and Matt. To complete this plan, Cass took help from her student and her colleague. With their help, they both were caught. Here, Alex, who was listening to all these stories, was very surprised at Cass's bravery. And here, Cass was remembering Rachel and Matt, who were very close to her, and she had all the happiness and sorrows of her life with them. Cass was also not happy with their death or punishment. The story ends with this scene, 